Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhad. In this session, we'll look at current liabilities. This topic is usually covered in financial accounting as well as the CPA exam, FAR section, and the ACCA exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where I house my 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. For example, this lecture is about financial accounting, but I do cover 10 other courses beside financial accounting. On my website, farhatlectures.com, in addition to the lectures, you can find PowerPoint slides, notes, multiple choice, true, false, CPA questions, as well as practice exercise. So what is a current liability? Current liability is simply a debt. So liability is a debt, but we need to define the word current. Well, if it's a current liability, it means the company expect to pay it within one year or the operating cycle, whichever is longer. So simply put, it's a liability that the company have to pay within one year or the operating cycle. Now, what do we mean by the operating cycle? Well, the operating cycle is how long does it take you to take some cash, invest the cash in something like an inventory, sell the inventory, create a receivable, collect the cash again. So how long does it take you to take some cash invest the cash and collect the cash again with profit. Obviously, this is the whole process is to make a profit. For example, for some companies, it may take you three months. For some companies, it may take you six months. So the point is, if it's less than a year, we assume your operating cycle is a year. So we always assume for financial accounting purposes, your operating cycle is a year. Now, what are some examples of current liabilities? It could be notes, basically a loan, a short-term loan, less than a year, accounts payable, and we looked at accounts payable in a prior chapter when you by goods and services on account, unearned revenues, and accrued liabilities. Also, we looked at those when we did the adjustments, such as taxes payable, salaries and wages payable, interest payable, and many others. So we have many types of accrued liabilities. In this session, we're going to focus on notes payable, unearned revenue, because those are two accounts that we did not cover heavily in prior chapter, especially notes payable. What is a notes payable? Basically, a notes payable is a written promise, basically an official promise to pay money, frequently issued to meet short-term financial need. It could be short-term or, you know, notes could be short-term or long-term, but with, if we're dealing with current liabilities, with notes payable, it, it must be short-term. It requires the borrower to pay interest. Of course, when you borrow money, you have to pay interest. And issues issued for varying periods. So it could be issued for three months, six days, 12 days, whatever amount you would you would like based on your needs. So let's take a look at some entries to see how it works. So First National Bank agrees to lend $100,000 on September 1st, 2019 if Cole Williams Company signs a $100,000, 12% four-month note maturing January 1st. So simply put, Cole Williams wanted to borrow $100,000 on September 1st. It will mature. It means they have to pay it back January 1st. First, we let's do the entry for the borrowing. When we borrow the money, Williams with debit cash, credit notes payable. What we just did, we just created a liability called notes payable. And from a T account perspective, we have a notes payable and we have $100,000 in liabilities. Now, we, we lend the money, we lend the money, we lend the money September 1st, and we're gonna, year one, this is year one, and we're gonna pay it back I'm going to do this in a different color, January 1st. So simply put, we're going to pay it right here, the following day. What happened from September 1st till December 31st, we have to accrue the interest. What does it mean accrue the interest? It means we have to compute our interest expense for that period. Well, it's a $100,000 loan times 12%. And we're going to multiply by September, October, November, and December. We're going to multiply this by... The time is 4 divided by 12 because we are computing the interest for 4 out of 12 months. All in all, this should be equal to 4,000. On December 31st, we debit interest expense 4,000, credit interest payable 4,000. Now what we just did, we just created another liability in addition to the notes payable. Now we have interest payable, which is an accrued liability. We accrued a liability of $4,000. Now, January 1st, the following day, we're going to go ahead and prepare the entry 
on the maturity date. On the maturity date, we have to pay. We have to pay all the interest. So what's all the interest? Again, I will do the computation again. It's one hundred thousand times twelve percent times four divided by twelve. We have to pay back an interest four thousand, and we have to pay back the principal amount. So we have to pay the note. So basically, we're going to debit the note one hundred thousand. Therefore, the note is gone. We're going to pay off the interest. We're going to debit note interest payable 4,000. The interest is gone. And we have to pay in cash $104,000. So what we did is we borrowed money, accrued the interest, paid the note with the accrued interest. The next liability we're going to be looking at, which is a current liability, is sales taxes payable. And what is, what is sales taxes payable? When you buy something from a store, if you go to Wawa, buy a cup of coffee, or if you go to the mall, buy a shirt, a pants, whatever you're buying, you're going to have to pay taxes. Those taxes are called sales tax. Simply put, you pay more than what's, for example, if somebody, if there's something for $50, you might end up paying $50 plus $3 in taxes, which is you end up paying $53. Why $3 in taxes? Because the government would like to have the local, the state, whatever that, whatever government is has jurisdiction, they will they need to you need to pay them what's called a sales tax. So it's a it's a fifty dollar times six percent, then you'll pay that amount, whatever that amount is. Okay. Now sales taxes are expressed as a stated percentage of the sales price. Okay, so basically it's usually a sales percentage. For example, in New York City, there's a sales tax of eight dollars in Pennsylvania. I'm sorry, eight percent. In Pennsylvania, six percent. And I know many people in New York they travel to Pennsylvania to buy their clothing because or any items because it's uh, it's cheaper. Actually, let's make the example a little bit more extreme. For example, in Delaware, there is no sales tax. So, for example, people drives to Delaware to buy high priced item so this way they don't pay sales tax now by law you're supposed to file when you file your income tax return you're supposed to claim it but that's beyond the scope of this of this uh, lecture so retailers selling companies collect tax from the customer enters that tax separately in a cash register or included in the total but they have to keep track of it then remit the collection to the state department of revenue so simply put in pennsylvania they send the money to harrisburg to the state to the to the state capital so you collect the money and you send it to the state. Let's take a look at an example, March 25th. The cash register reading for this grocery shows sales of 10,000 and sales tax of 600. We made sales of 10,000, but we also collected 6% sales tax. Therefore, we collected in total 10,000 plus 600, 10,600. We credit sales revenue, only 10,000 because this is the sales. Then we have a liability called sales taxes payable. Now we have sales taxes payable we just created a six hundred dollar liability now eventually we're going to send this money to the to Harrisburg when we send the money we debit sales taxes payable six hundred and we credit cash six hundred so this is the adjusting entry a and a this is the adjusting entry and basically this will be gone okay so basically we're done with we're left with ten thousand cash ten thousand revenue okay now, sometimes what happened is the company do not enter the sales tax separately. What does that mean? It means what they do, enter the total receipts of 10,600. So when they collect the money, they don't separate the sales tax from the tax because the amount received from the sale is equal to the sales price. It's 100% plus 6% tax. So what happens, some, some companies, which is, it's a bad, it's a bad, it's a bad habit, but some companies do it. They don't, like, for example, you'll pay the price for an item and the price include the sales tax. Simply, what does that mean? It means the company will have to go back and back out the sales tax. So if the company collected in total 10,600, if they collected in total 10,600, the sales tax is 6%, you will take 10,600 divided by 1.06, they will back out the revenue account. So this is the revenue. So what's left, if the revenue is 10,600 must then sales tax. So you don't collect it upfront, you'll back it out. Therefore, the entry that we make is cash 10,600, credit sales revenue 10,000 and credit sales taxes payable. So basically you have to back out the, uh, this, the, the sales tax from the total. So you pay one price, they don't tell you, you know, 
you don't pay sales tax, but you do. It's included in the price, but it's the job of the retailer. The job of the seller is to back it out. Another current, another cu common current liability we have to deal with is unearned revenue. And what is unearned revenue? Unearned revenue is, is, is when someone pays you upfront for services that for services that you have not performed. So s simply put, they will pay you up front for something that you did not you did not um, you did not complete yet so what do you do is this revenue received before the company deliver goods or services so when somebody pays you cash you 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 debit cash and when you did not do the work yet you credit unearned revenue you credit unearned revenue so when does that happen it happens when airline companies they get your money up front but really they don't have revenue until you travel magazine publishers if you are still subscriber to a magazine a physical magazine hotels you pay before you before um, before they provide the service another example will be uh, let's assume superior university sells 10,000 season football tickets at $50 each for its five home game schedule so when they sell the tickets they may sell them sometime in August before the season start so they will debit cash half a million which is great they will credit well it's August 6 they will credit unearned ticket revenue half a million now those tickets are for five games so what's gonna happen is this as the as the team play each game as the team play each game they will debit for example September 7 they play the first game they will debit they would reduce unearned revenue hundred thousand now we still have four hundred thousand because this is unearned revenue we debit unearned revenue hundred thousand we still have four hundred thousand and we credit revenue one hundred thousand we credit revenue one hundred thousand Another liability is current liabilities, which is called current maturities of long-term debt. And what is that? Simply put, if you have a long-term loan, if you have a loan for, let's assume, five years, this is year one, year two, year three, year four, and year five. What's going to happen is this, because this is a long-term loan. Let's talk about current liabilities, specifically current maturities of long-term debt. What does that mean? Let's assume you have a loan for five years. This is year one payments, year two, year three, year four, and year five. This is considered five five-year loan. Why it's a it's a long-term loan? Why it's a long-term loan? Because it's going to be with us for five years. However, what's going to happen is this: this year, year one, the payment that we're going to be making in the next year. This is considered current portion. So this is the current portion. What does that mean? It means year two, year three, year four, and year five are the long-term portion. So you have a current portion, you have a current portion, and you have a long-term portion, okay? Portion of the long term that that's due within the current year is considered current and there's no adjusting entry here to make and I remember from work because we dealt a lot with a lot of medium and small businesses and they have many loans. All businesses have loans but when you are dealing with medium sized businesses they have many types of loans and I still remember breaking down those into current and long term debt. So let's take a look at an illustration. Let's assume one deconstruction issued a five year interest bearing note. 25,000 on January 1st. This note specified that each January 1st, Wendy should pay 5,000 5, of the note. So when we prepare the financial statement, it's a $25,000 loan. What's gonna happen is every year we'll pay 5,000. So what amount of this liability is considered current? Well, 5,000 is current because within a year we have to pay 5,000. What remains is the long-term portion, which is 20,000. So notice, 20, plus five, the loan is 25,000, 5,000 will be considered current, and 20 will be considered long-term. We call this as current portion or current maturity of long-term debt. We call the 20,000 long-term debt net of short-term portion, 
short term portion so you may see this language so you know what it what it means in case you saw it in the financial paper let's take a look at a few examples real quick if cash is borrowed on a fifty thousand dollar six month 12 percent note on september 1st how much interest expense you would incur by december 31st so you borrowed fifty thousand dollar you borrowed fifty thousand dollar on september 1st and it's due six months later okay but the question is how much interest is accrued as of december 31st well you, you have september october november and december you have september october november and december you have to compute the interest for four months so you're going to take fifty thousand times 12 percent times four divided by 12. so as of december 31st you have two thousand of accrued interest what do you do on that date you debit interest expense for 2000 it's accrued and you credit interest payable of 2000 that's what you would do how much is the sales tax how is the sales tax amount determined when the cash register includes the sales tax so what does that mean it means when you collect the money and you collected the four hundred thousand dollar in total and you did not separate the sales tax from the revenue so let's assume in your state the sales tax is six percent what you do to, to back out the sales revenue from the sales tax you will take the amount four hundred thousand four hundred thousand divided by 1.06 so 377,358 377 oops 377 358 that's your sales 400 divided by 1.06 now you take 400,000 minus 377 358 and you will find your sales tax okay so you back it out so divide the total cash register by 100 percent plus the sales tax 100 percent plus the sales tax then subtract the sales revenue from the amount uh, of the of the revenue the total 400,000 minus that amount if $15,000 is collected in advance on November 1st for three months rent what amount of rent revenue would be recognized December 31st so you collected 15,000 and it's for three months therefore each month you are going to recognize 5,000 so if you collected this money in November okay November 1st you're gonna have November and December okay because it's not gonna fit it's not gonna end till January so for the f for the year December 31st you have two months two months is gonna give you ten thousand dollar worth of revenue which is two-third and you would you would still have you would still have five thousand dollars so let's do the entry anyway so you receive the money up front you debit cash fifteen thousand you credit unearned revenues fifteen thousand this is November 1st this is November 1st on December 31st you earn two out of three months two out of three months is debit unearned revenue $10,000 credit revenues $10,000 from a T account perspective from unearned revenues you had 15,000 you reduced it by 10 you still have $5,000 for the month of January in the next session, we would look at payroll and payroll taxes payable. As always, I would like to remind you to visit my website as I do have additional resources such as PowerPoint slides, notes, uh, practice exercises. Um, I, I suggest you subscribe. It's an investment in your career, especially if you're studying for your CPA exam. Good luck and study hard.